Good morning. Good morning, church family. I'm going to ask you to come to a place of stillness so that we can begin our morning meditation. It's always wonderful to take a moment to just be still, to just be still. So if you would make sure that you're comfortable in your seat, please don't let your arms be crossed, uncross your legs. You can close your eyes or you can leave your eyes open. If they're open, have a very soft gaze and begin to breathe. Breathe into your belly, expanding the belly. When you exhale, let it be a long, slow exhale. So we are expanding the belly and having a long, slow exhale. I don't want to give you the timing for your breath. Breathe at your own pace. Just make sure that your belly gets nice and big and that the exhale is long and slow. And in this place of stillness, Invite God in. On the inhale, God, please come here and be with us. On the exhale, thank you, God, so much for your presence. On your inhale, please come and be with us. And on the exhale, thank you, God, for your presence. Enjoy the service, church family. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, it's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. It is good to see your faces as people begin to trickle in, including my children right there. Hello. All right. And it just feels good to be here. Feels good to have everybody here. Feels good to have Kelly here with us. Amen. Amen. Sister Kelly. Our sister. And right now, I just want us to sing this together, if you know it. Because the reason why we are here in the house of the Lord is because, church, I feel Jesus in this place. Amen? 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 amen. And amen. Let's sing this together. The song simply says, I feel Again, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel Jesus in this place. Yes, my soul. Let's 
let's say that again. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. used to quote the passage where it says, uh, where two or three gather, God will be among us as we have gathered. And it is so good to be in the house of the Lord because we could be anywhere else. There's a lot of people that did not make it this week. Oh, I assure you, there are a lot of people that did not make it this week. And I know some of them. But here we are right now together. And I want us, those who can lift their voice, I want you to sing this with us. And I want you to not just sing it, because the song doesn't just say, I know Jesus, because we know Jesus, but this song says, I feel Jesus. There's a difference, amen? I feel Jesus. So we're going to say that one more time, all of us together. I feel Jesus in me. Listen, listen, listen. So we started with a, just a, a perfect meditation. And then we went into something that was very meditative. But now it's time to have a little fun. Amen? Now it's time to have a little fun. Amen? <laughs> Amen. That, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to raise the tempo a bit. Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite prophets, Elijah. As soon as I said Elijah, my son looked at me, yeah, Elijah, that's the name of the prophet. We talked about him. And you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As we know, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Then they had all of these children. Then they called them the tribes of Israel. One of those tribes was called Gad. We believe that out of that tribe, much later, uh, 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 Elijah came from that. And Elijah was bold. He had what we called holy boldness. The question is, how bold are you? Because these are the days of Elijah. I want y'all to put your hands together and say, Trumpets go, lift your voice, 
are the days of Elijah, preparing the word of the Lord. These are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Listen. Let's say, let's say, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Let's say, uh, listen. Listen, we didn't talk about Elijah, we didn't mention Moses, but there's another prophet that I like. That prophet is Jeremiah. And Jeremiah talked about what it felt like when the Holy Spirit takes over you. Jeremiah said, said, said it's just like fire, shut up in my bones, said it's just like fire, shut up in my bones, said, 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 fire, shut up in my bones, said it just like fire, said it shut up in my bones, said it just like fire, shut up in my bones, said it just like fire, shut up in my bones.
Good morning, church family. Good morning, good morning. Let's take a moment and bow our heads as we join together as a community in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with life. We gather here today with open hearts and open minds, ready to worship and praise your holy name. Feel the presence of the Lord and feel peace in this place on this beautiful, beautiful day. As a community gathered together, let us approach today collectively with no fear, but with acceptance, strength, and love. Father, reveal your love to us today as we gather to worship and honor you with our praise. Fill us with your love, fill us with your grace. And when we leave this place, let us carry this peace that we will gratefully share with others. Amen. he talks about a God-shaped void that we all have. This is a void that can only be filled by God. We have tried many things to fill that void. It never works. Think of those things. Think of those things. Sometimes it's just fun, partying. You know, there have been people, not you, but there have been people who have tried drugs to fill that void, alcohol to fill that void, you know, money to fill that void, but it never quite hits the spot. It never satisfies that void that you are trying to fill. But folks, I want to tell y'all there is none like Jesus. There is none like Jesus. Listen, 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 listen. There is none like you. Yeah. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity. Sing that together, there is no
I just figured out something. One of my hobbies is praising the Lord. You know, we think about those things that we enjoy to do. And I enjoy praising the Lord. I enjoy praising the Lord. There is none like my God. I'll share them with you. There is none like our God. There's no one, there's no one yeah. like our God. Amen. Amen. I like to start by saying namaste. The love and the light in me loves, honors, and respects the light in you. Do we have any visitors worshiping with us this morning? If we have any visitors, I'd ask you to please stand. So we have no visitors, and that's okay. We're all family. Amen, amen, amen. So I also I want to thank or welcome everybody who is here this morning. I want to welcome everybody who is joining us by the miracles of the World Wide Web. I don't know how we do it, but we're able to go everywhere all the time. Isn't that good? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay, so our announcements for this morning. Do you provide care for a family member, a friend, or a neighbor who has an illness, disability, memory loss, injury, or special need that the Lead Me Caregiver Support Group can help you with? The Agape Counseling Ministry is inviting you to the Lead Me Lord Caregiver Support Group that is today at 7 p.m. via conference call. The conference call number is 712-432-3900, and the access code is 41. Seven to six pound. The Nehemiah Men's Ministry invites all men to a planning session that's going to be on campus only Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. The ministry is going to be planning for the remainder of 2024. So men, please come on out and bring a friend with you. Our spring revival is here, church family. I'm not going to let y'all let me be the only one who's excited about this. Our spring revival is going to be this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, April 9th, 10th, and 11th. The service will be at 7 p.m. each night in the sanctuary. Our guest preacher is Reverend Onaje Crawford from the First Hopewell Baptist Church of Newark, New Jersey. There will be no PP and P service next Wednesday, but we will be having revival. <laughs> amen, amen. The Ruth and Naomi Women's Ministry April meeting will be in person on Saturday, April 20th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Family Life Center. Miss Elizabeth Gill Esquire will present on women what you need to know about estate planning. Topics covered will include wills, probate, power attorney, and more. Ladies, you do not want to miss this informative session and um, Miss Elizabeth Gill, who is a wonderful person. And the last announcement, I'll read it before I let you get excited with me. The Reverend Robert Ross Johnson Street Co-Naming Committee in conjunction with City Council Member Natasha Williams of District 27 invites you to the unveiling ceremony of Reverend Robert Ross Johnson Boulevard in order, in honor, sorry, I'm too excited to talk, in honor of our founding pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing. So this will be Saturday, April 27th at 1 p.m. This is a momentous occasion for our church. Very, very appropriate for our 70th anniversary year. Church, I am looking forward to that date, and I know you are too. 
I am walking away now. I would like to wish everybody a wonderful week. Thank you. Good morning, St. Albans. Good morning, St. Albans. Amen. It's good to see each and every one of you who are out here on today. And I am excited. Uh, in a few moments, I want to reiterate a couple of, of the announcements that Tanya just shared with us, Dr. Tanya just shared with us. I want to reiterate that. But before uh, we go there, I remember when Dr. Simmons would come, uh, would, 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 would stand before the congregation, and he would make a statement. He would say, I know my sheep. You remember that? that? That's when basically what would happen is, for those who may not be aware, we would ask for visitors to stand, and there would be sometimes visitors would not stand. And Dr. Simmons would say, I know my sheep. In other words, I know if you're not necessarily a member of this church. So I need the ushers, because I saw somebody in the congregation that didn't stand. And uh, I want to uh, acknowledge them. And I'm going to ask if the ushers would bring a card, please to give to this wonderful person. Mike, how you doing, man? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. And I know there's this young lady sitting next to you that when we asked the visitors to stand, you looked at her and she kept looking straight. And she kept looking straight and she kept looking straight. What's your name, young lady? Julian. Julian, welcome, welcome, welcome. I, hate, I know I put you way out on Front Street. It'll never happen again. Amen. But we want to say welcome to you and to others who are visiting with us here today as well. God bless you. We pray that you enjoy this worship experience. You can just fill the card out, and when the plate comes around, you can just drop it right in the plate. We just want to give you a call, send you a letter, let you know we appreciate you worshiping with us, and to invite you again. The doors are always open. Mike, I hope this ain't the last time, bro. Amen. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Amen. And so, with that being said, I just want to reiterate a couple of things that Dr. Tanya said in the announcements. To the brothers, uh, to the brothers on April 13th, uh, that's an important date. We need you to come out. Uh, I want to invite all of our band as well to this April 13th meeting. We'll be together for a, a, maybe an hour, maybe a little more, but to come out and to, and to be a part of this planning session as the, uh, the men's ministry, Nehemiah Men's Ministry, will continue to plan for the rest of this year and for uh, beginning going into the new year, but it can't happen without you. So, brothers, we need you. Brother Manny, good to see you, man. God bless you, my brother. Very important person in our community, one of our community leaders, Brother Manny. Uh, we, we, we're, we're glad to see you this uh, morning. So, men, we want you to come out April 13th. That's this Saturday at 10 p. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Don't come out here at 10 p.m. You're going to be mad. Uh, 10 a.m., come on out. We want to continue to work together, plan together, build together. Amen. As black men and to be a, a wonderful example for our young black men who are growing up to become responsible adults. So we need you to come on out for that. I want to reiterate this, the, the spring revival, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. nightly. We'll be on campus and we'll be online. We want to invite you out. Uh, and finally, um, for the Ruth and Naomi uh, women's ministry that is having the estate planning, uh, brothers, we have permission to come and join the sisters. Amen. For that estate planning. And so we want to come out to support the sisters, but we also are coming out to get the information for ourselves. See, the problem is sometimes, and I'm not talking about nobody, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, but death is not always an easy thing to discuss before you die. Right. But 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 after you're no longer here, your family members who are still here have to deal with whatever the fallout is. And sometimes uh, people pass on and they have nothing in place. So the family ends up at each other's throats and arguing and bickering with one another. They were mad with you while you was here. They mad at you and you in the grave. We don't want that to happen. So what we want to happen is we want to make sure that we are well prepared. Amen well prepared so that when we do transition and go on to be with the Lord and join that great cloud of witnesses, that our family that is left behind will continue to be able, they don't have to be burdened with, with, with more debt and things of this nature. We can put some things in place to be sure that our family members that are left behind don't have to pick up the weight of the stuff we left behind. Amen? 
It got real quiet right there. <laughs> All right? And so we want to, we just want to uh, uh, remind you of these things. I think that's all that I want to reiterate on this day. Uh, but I do want to let you know the birthday month celebration is meeting next week on Sunday at 3 p.m. online, where we celebrate everyone whose birthday is in the month of April. And speaking of birthdays in the month of April, uh, if you are celebrating a birthday in the month of April, please stand. We'd like to recognize you. We'd like to recognize you. Please stand. Amen. Oh, yes, I have uh, Sister Margaret Dudley. I have you on my list. April 21st. That's your birthday. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Marilyn, you just, I just found out, like, right before church, that you have, the, have a birthday. What's the date again? April 20th. Oh, y'all share the same birthday. Amen. Amen. You got to make sure you reach out to each other and just say, hey, happy birthday, girl. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Billy, when's your birthday? April 10th. April 10th. So yours is coming up this week. Amen. Brother Patrick, I see you in the back. The 27th. Amen. And we have, yes, you have a birthday. Is that Miss Van Brackle? What? How you doing? Good morning. When is your birthday? April 25th. April 25th. Oh, amen. Amen. April 25th, my sister. The 17th of April. Amen. The 17th of April. And I have you on my list, Sister Una Barnett. April 29th. That's your birthday. Amen. Amen. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anyone. All right. We're going we to sing. We're going to sing. Come on. Get ready, y'all. Come on. Let's sing. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Everybody, one, two, three. Happy birthday. birthday. Amen. And may God bless Woo! you with many, many more. Woo! Amen. Uh, anyone celebrating an anniversary in the month of April, please stand. Celebrating an anniversary in the month of April. Anyone? No? Okay. We didn't have any at 8 o'clock either. Amen. All right. All right. Um, okay. So as we move forward in our worship experience, and again, happy birthday to all who are celebrating a birthday in April. I do have a message from one of our sisters here in our congregation. It says Reverend Eli the Third and First Lady, Reverend Heron, Reverend Franklin, Wow Ministry, Deacons, and all of St. Albans Congregational Church. Thank you for your prayers, cards, phone calls, and flowers sent to me during my knee surgery. I appreciate you, you all, and so glad to be one of your members. Please accept this token of $300 toward the building and repairs of St. Albans Congregational Church. In God, I put my trust. Amen. And this comes from Sister Marlene Edwards, who's here with us today. God bless you, Marlene. We've been keeping you lifted in prayer. We pray that God will continue to shower his blessings upon you as well. Brenda Dawkins Carter. Carter Dawkins, excuse me. I'm holding a check in my hand for three hundred dollars. I'd like you for you to remove that, please. Because if something come out missing, y'all ain't gonna be able to blame the pastor. Y'all are not gonna be able to blame the pastor. So I'd like to I'd like to give this check. Chuck Brenda is the vice chair of our trustee board. In case y'all wondering, she's the vice chair of our trustee board. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so. We continue to worship the Lord on today, and we continue to bless God for this day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to give a shout-out to Kelly. 
Hi, Kelly. Welcome back. It's, it's good to see you. Good to see you. I don't know, um, Tone may have said something, but I came in a little bit after 10, so my bad if I missed it. But, but we're good. <laughs> so I did miss it. Okay. <laughs> but it's good to have you. It's good to have you back. Amen. And so as we move forward, we consider the giving of our tithes and offering. The Bible, Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down and shaken together will others give unto your bosom. And so as the ushers prepare to receive us and Exodus comes to render another uh, offertory selection, let us, oh, and right. And make sure you can also use our text to give option. That's whether you're on campus or you're watching from home or wherever you may be. You can use our text to give option. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. But for those who are on campus, you want to text the message S-A-C-C-U-C-C. And you want to send that message to the number 73256. 73256. Remember, you get a receipt for your, for your filing system because your gifts and donations are tax deductible. So let us prepare our hearts to give graciously for God loves a cheerful giver. Hey. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. We're going to have a little fun with this. Every now and then we try to do something original. Something that you will only hear here. This song is called Sunday Morning. We did it last week. And you liked it. So we brought it back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead and put your hands together. Hey. Get 
to sing with us. Amen. This next part, you get to sing with us. Amen. How many singers we got in the house? Yeah, 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 yeah. I need y'all and the ones that can't sing to come together and say, come on, we're going to say, hero, bro. Sunday that we come together. Every time we come together to be able to give, we thank you for being a God who has provided for us, who has made ways in what seems sometimes like no way. So we thank you, O oh God, that uh, for those who saw it not robbery to give a portion to you. We ask, O oh God, that you bless the gift. We ask, O oh God, that you bless the giver. And we ask that you bless the one who is unable to give on this day. Know, Father, that it will all be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we, we move into that time of prayer. We come together. And I don't know about you, but we can use some prayer out there. Amen. In the world that we live in in our own personal lives and struggles and victories and testimonies. Some of that, all of that happened because either you prayed or somebody prayed for you. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came to Daniel and said it was good that you were fasting for 20 and one days because I had to go through some stuff to bring the message to you, to bring the answer to you. In fact, when you read even deeper into that story of Daniel, the Bible talks about how the angel of the Lord had to help the archangel Michael fight on his way to bringing the answer. And Michael helped this angel, they helped each other and helped to get the message. And the angel said to Daniel, after he brought the answer to his prayer, he said, now I'm going to go back and help the archangel Michael fight the battle of good and evil. And so that's what we have on our side. The power of prayer is effective. Uh, and, and the power of prayer from the hearts of the righteous availeth much. And so we want to keep those on our healing and care list lifted in prayer. We continue to keep Sister Marlene Edwards lifted in prayer. We want to keep bereaved families, those who are still bereaving the loss of their loved ones. And so the Whitfield family, uh, Keisha Whitfield lost her grandmother, whose name was Pearl Small. And Mary Campbell and her family, who most recently lost a nephew, and I neglected to mention, but also we want to keep Dr. James Curtis lifted in prayer, as Dr. James Curtis is celebrating a birthday in the month of April, and he will be 102 years of age on his birthday. And so we wanted to make sure that we were able to give a shout out. Hopefully, he or his family is watching and will watch at another time. Uh, and receive our love and prayers to the Curtis family. And then we have others on our request list. And then there are perhaps something that is heavy and burdened upon your heart. And I want to remind you that the Lord says, bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. 
leave them. Don't, don't take it back to the seat with you. Don't, don't take it back in the car with you. Don't bring it back home with you. Just leave it there because how much worrying will add any time to our lives? There are some things that we have control of and we can take care of, but there are some things that only God's grace and mercy can bring us through. And so we have asked Deacon Elijah Jones if he will help to lead us to the throne of grace in prayer on behalf of the people. Good morning, church. It's time to pray. But I got to say, T, you are an amazing songwriter. <laughs> I already know how to sing that song. I know, I know the spirit is, I know the spirit helped you write that one. But, and he helps, I'm sure he helps you do everything. And you, and you do do it well. Um, you know, come every Sunday morning, um, sometimes we're not here. I just wanted to mention this. And we, you know, we listen to, you know, online services. And the online services is really, really good. And it's touching a lot of lives. It's touching the lives of, of friends and coworkers that I work with, young people that uh, may not come through those doors, but they're, they're listening in. And they quite often listen in. So I, I, um, I appreciate um, what Christ has told us to go out and make disciples. And uh, they're just being made in a different place sometimes. Um, but we thank God for that. Um, he has risen, and he has risen indeed. And I'll tell you this much. Um, he's done a lot for this life standing before you right now. Um, and I just want to say to you all that um, God is good. God is good. Not, not sometimes, but all the time. God is good. Ephesians 6.18 reads this way in the New International Version. It says, I pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So let us bow our heads right now in prayer and be obedient to God's word. Heavenly and most merciful Father, Lord God, we come before you once again, Lord God, in prayer. Lord God, we come and petition you, Lord God, for many things, Father. And we know that, Lord God, even before we open our mouth, you already know what's on our hearts and on our minds. But Lord God, you have given us the ability to call upon your holy and righteous name through your son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our friend, our brother, we thank you, Lord God, that you made the supreme sacrifice in him, Lord God, who died on the cross for our sins, which we clearly remembered last week, that that's what he did for us. We thank you, Lord God, that you, Father God, continue to keep us, bless us, and watch over us, Lord God. We thank you, God, for all, Father God, the miracles that are shown to us each and every Sunday when we see someone who wasn't here last week here now, Lord God. When we see, Father God, they are in better health than they were when they left here the last time, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you are merciful, God. We thank you, God, that you give us, Father God, what we don't deserve and you don't give us what we do. Lord God, you are so good and merciful, Lord. Father God, I can't say it enough, Lord. But Lord God, I tell you this much, Lord God, and I ask this of you, Lord. Father God, watch over our minister, Lord God. Watch over all of them, Father God, Reverend Heron, Reverend Wilson, and Reverend Eli, Lord God. Touch them right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Where, Father God, they serve, Father God, you, but Lord God, it is not an easy task when they have to take care of us as well, Lord God. Father God, we are their children too, Father God, in, in many respects. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that we have them to lean on. So, Father God, we need you to continue to stand up in them, Lord God to give them the strength they need, provide for every need that they have. Lord God, bless their families. Bless their, bless their, bless their families in special ways, Lord God. Their mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, uncles, and aunts, and even their grandchildren, Lord God. 
We ask that you bless them, Father. We ask that you keep them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we also, Father God, come before you right now, Lord God, to say thank you for, for healing us, Father God. Healing us, Father God, not only in the body, but in the spirit. Lord God, you've called us to care for this body, Lord God, because it carries a spirit. It carries, each and every one of us has our own spirit, Lord God. And Father God, we are divinely blessed by the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, Lord God. But Lord God, we also, Father God, have a gift from you, Lord God. Not only through Christ, but Father God, your word, your living word through him, but Father God, even the one on the, in the Bible, Lord God. Our, our, our divine instructions from you, Lord God. Our biblical instructions before leaving this earth. Lord God, there is nothing in your word that doesn't help us on a daily basis if we would just seek you, Father God, while you still can be found. Though the world, Father God, is at, their, at a point now where they're trying to cancel every culture, but Lord God, they ain't canceling this, Lord God. As long as I breathe, Father God, and as long as I'm here on this earth, Father God, I'm going to sing your praises. And if anybody asks me why, it wasn't because of a man, but Lord God, it was because of you. And Lord God, I know that, Father God, this prayer is in each and every one of us. So continue to bless us and keep us. Continue to bless those, Father God, who are, are bereaved, Lord God, and have lost loved ones, Lord God. We remember Deacon Fanny, Father God, who recently lost her brother. You've heard the names of the other folks that, Father God, have lost loved ones. But, Lord God, we say the word lost, but, Father God... I'm going to cancel that word, Father God, because we don't lose anything that we return to you, Lord God, because you are the author and the finisher of every life here. So, Lord God, we have a beginning and we have an end. But, Lord God, we have an eternal promise that, Father God, we can dwell with you, Father God, when, when it's our time. But, Lord God, I'm not looking forward to that either right now, Lord God. But, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that your mercy and grace will continue to be with us, will continue to, to light a light for us, Father God, and, and keep up, keep the path lit for us to find our way to you. So we thank you, Lord God, for your mercy. We thank you for your love, and once again, we thank you for your grace. In the powerful and matchless name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our friend. Amen. Amen. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just one. Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 32 through 35 it says all the believers were one in heart and mind no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own but they shared everything they had with great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them for from this time from this from time to time those who owned land and houses sold them brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need this is the word of the lord may god's name be praised amen The Lord feels good to be back in the house of the Lord. <laughs> good to see you guys. Well, how many of you know that there's power in the name of Jesus? Chain breaking power.
And all the time, God is good, but I want to say every now and again, you got to say, God are good. It's bad English, but it's good theology. Amen. God is breaking chains. He's in the breaking chains business and able to carry whatever it may be. So I'd like to read one more time this passage into your hearing. From Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. It says, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in, in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land and houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the feet, apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. For the few moments that we have together, I'd like to talk to you from the thought, from the subject matter, this is the way. This is the way. Let us pray. Lord God, I really, really, really need your Holy Spirit to speak. I really need you, oh God, please, to speak to your people. Someone has something on their heart that they may not necessarily be verbalizing to others, but God, you know all of our situations. You know the very number of the hairs that are on our head. You knew us before we were in our mother's womb. Speak by your Holy Spirit. That your people, oh God, we all will be edified. But that most importantly, Father, your name will be glorified. And we'll be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Now let the words of our hearts, the meditation, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, our strength, our rock, our refuge, and our redeemer. Amen. This is the way. I remember it was circa 2017 when I had just come here 
and came on board on staff with St. Albans Congregational Church at the then time under the leadership and tutelage of Reverend Dr. Henry T. Simmons, the beloved, the living legend, I call him myself, Dr. Henry T. Simmons, and I had come, and it was just about the fourth Sunday in January of 2017, and I remember this very well because it was the first time I got an opportunity to enjoy the wonderful song selections of the men's choir. I don't know if y'all ever saw the men's choir sing, but it's like going to see the Temptations in concert. We have a great time. They enjoy themselves singing unto the Lord. And so while we were there, before we had gone up into the sanctuary, we were in the undercroft, and we started to pray like we always do before service begins. And uh, just before we started praying, I walked up to this gentleman, and I asked him a question. I said, how tall are you? And he said, 6'6". Six, six. If you don't know who I'm talking about, it's probably the tallest person in our congregation. Hey, Deacon Fanny, it's good to see you this morning. Probably the tallest person in our congregation, Deacon Shelley Bruce Roberts. He was down there, part of the men's choir. He, he, he is not a small fry, everybody. He's tall. He's head and shoulders taller than everybody in this room, just about. Certainly, you can put two heads and two shoulders, and that's how much taller he is over me. And I went over there, and I said, how tall are you? And he said, 6'6". Six, six. And I said to him, I will never know what it's like to live life from that perspective. I'll never know what it's like to be 6'6". Six, six. It began the beginning of our relationship, which has blossomed into something wonderful. We share, uh, we pray with one another, we share with one another, and Deacon Shelley will pay, will t uh, text me or call, and I'll text him or call, and we will, we will get together and have conversations a, a couple times, sometimes a few times a month, and, and, and Deacon Shelley has this thing that he says all the time. Whenever you're about to depart from one another, he always says, love is the way. Love is the way. He'll, he'll sometimes put it at the end. He'll come sometimes says, I love you with the love of the Lord and there's nothing you can do about it because love is the way. I thank God for Deacon Shelley because I think that we need to be re reminded of that from time to time, that we need to be reminded that love is the way. Sometimes we get beside ourselves. Sometimes we go back to our old self. We take the earrings off, go grab the onions and the grease, put it on our face and get ready to go see somebody outside. But then we stop ourselves and say, hold on a second. Love is the way. That used to be how I would have responded to a thing. I used to just threw, threw my hands up and started throwing some shot. I used to do that, but I found a new way to live. I found a new neighborhood to live in. It's called the Jesus people, the community of Christ that teaches me and you that love is the way. Jesus said it this way. He said, they will know that you are my disciples by your love and by the fruit that you bear, that that love bears. Paul says it this way. He says, uh, in the end, there is faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So I appreciate Deacon Shelley for always sharing that, whether we want to hear it or not, it don't matter. He's going to say it regardless. And I always look forward to hearing him talk like this because it helps to keep me, uh, uh, keep the feet on the ground, keep me on the straight and narrow to remember that love is the way. But put a pen right there. I'm going to come back to that, uh, back to Deacon Shelley, back to love is the way. But I need to share something with you first before we get into the text because it'll help us really get a, a, a I think a better, well-rounded, holistic look at what this text is talking about. On last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, uh, we came together to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. All day we were saying he is risen, he is risen indeed. This indeed is an, uh, a holiday, if you will, on the Christian calendar that has been celebrated for thousands of years. But the question that I have for you to think about for yourself is have we yet learned what this way is? Thousands of years we've been celebrated and we know what to say, the good stuff, to the jargon to say, but did we really get the message? I'm not talking about when everything is going well. I'm talking about when everything is going to pot. Can we still rejoice in the Lord? 
I ask this question because uh, last Sunday, uh, Reverend Dr. Tracy Blackman preached at a church in East New York, Brooklyn, and every now and again between services and sometimes after the 10, I'll jump on Facebook and I'll try to catch a service because I so I can worship too because the reality is even though we're together in worship, many of us are working. Okay, I'm, you know what I'm saying, okay. So, so, so. I turn on the Facebook and I'm looking at Reverend Dr. Tracy Blackman at this church in East New York, Brooklyn, and she's talking about the fact that the church has a life cycle. That the church has a life cycle, much like the human being has a life cycle. The church has a life cycle. What she says is she started talking about the historicity of the church. She went all the way back to the beginning, the time of the apostles, the first century church, and then she talked about uh, a time in church history called the Great Schism. The Great Schism is when the church began to be chopped up. They started to split off, and that's when you start getting denominations that you see, UCC, Baptist, AME, uh, uh, UMC, whatever the denomination is, the Great Schism was the beginning of all of that that then subsequently happened later. Then she moved from the Great Schism to the Reformation, the time of Martin Luther, the time of the Peasant War, the time of feudalism. But then she went from Reformation to, tw to the 21st century. And what she said in her point was is that every 500 years, the church has a major shakeup. It has a, let me use a different word, it has a major, it's making a major shift. And sometimes we can get with the shift, and sometimes we can't get with the shift. But there is, every 500 years, uh, Dr. Blackman suggests is that the church goes through this major shakeup. And then she said this, she said, we are in the window of 500 years right now. Which makes so much sense because while, while those of us who love to come together, love to come into the sanctuary, love to come together as the assembly of God, whether we are joining at home on our devices or we come onto campus, there are those of us who love to be in this place. It feels special. It feels magnetic. We feel brand new. We feel differently than the way in which we came. But we got a whole lot of young people who ain't even thinking about coming into the church. That's a problem. Why is that a problem? Because when you and I ain't here no more, who's going to carry the torch? Now, I know we got our babies here, and they're going to be a part of the future of St. Albans Congregational Church, but there's some other young folk also who ain't even thinking about coming into the church. We're in that 500-year win window right now. We could, in that 500-year window, we could talk about the transatlantic slave trade. We can talk about the Reconstruction era. We can talk about the days of Jim Crow and the civil rights movement. We can talk about the, first, the fact that we first put a black president, African-American president, in the Oval Office that we put and voted in, the first African-American, Caribbean-American, and the first woman to be a vice president in the history of this yet-to-be United States of America. We can talk about the 1980s when founding pastor Reverend Robert Ross Johnson had to deal with the HIV and AIDS epidemic and had to deal with the crack epidemic. We can talk about how in 1993 a new pastor came onto the scene in Reverend Dr. Henry T. Simmons, but a few years later he had to deal with the fallout of 9-11 when the World Trade Center came crashing down. We can talk about 2020 when a pandemic showed up on the scene. We could talk about how just a few Sundays ago, Dr. Tony A. Waldron, uh, Dr. Tony Waldron said standing in this pulpit that the church is not dying, it's just shifting. And we are in this 500 year window right now and, and, and if we continue to move and, and continue to be reckless in the way that we live, if we continue to walk according to our own path, doing it our own way, not following the blueprint of salvation, then we become like the man on the runaway horse that is running down the path and then runs past a man who's walking and the man who's walking yells to the man on the horse, where are you going? And the man on the horse says, I don't know. Ask the horse. 
The horse represents our woes and the, the, the horse represents our worry and the horse represents our weariness. And if left on, unchecked for too long, if we are too far out of the presence of God for too long, if we haven't gone to our prayer closet in several months, we need to look at that because if we don't, we might be like the man on the horse where we can't answer a simple question. Where are you going? The psalmist in the 121st Psalm, stay with me, I'm going somewhere, I'm about to get in the text in a minute. The psalmist in the 121st Psalm writes this song, and this psalm is designed for travelers on the path of righteousness. It's designed for people like me and you who wake up every day, do the best we can to, 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 to deal with and to play the hand that we've been dealt, do the best that we can, make the best decisions we can for our children and grandchildren and our financial situations and our home life and family life. This psalm is designed for travelers on the path of righteousness who are faced with the demands of life and who have to take faith risks every now and again. But this psalm is also tells us in the same psalm that it provides an opportunity for you and I on the journey. It, it provides for us an opportunity that we can leave some things, some things behind and add some things to our life. We can leave behind self-indulgence and we can pick up the simplicity of life. We can leave behind behind anxiety and selfishness and we can pick up the freedom that we have in Christ. The reality is the psalmist is reminding us that God is simply trying to, to bring us to a new neighborhood. Who are the people in your neighborhood? In your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. Oh, who are the people in your neighborhood? Y'all looking at me like I got three heads. Thank you to my brother for singing along with me. But I'm going to stop there because I don't remember the rest of the song. The people that you meet each day. It's my brother. He's the historian of our family. He knows. God is simply trying to help us arrive into this new place, this new way of being, this new way of life, this new neighborhood surrounded by new friends who are like-minded, spirit-minded, Christ-like, and moving in the place, direction of joy and in the direction of faith and in the direction of peace because we serve a self-giving God. God gives of God's self all the time. He blesses us with his grace that we don't deserve and he gives us, he gives us mercy that oftentimes the punishment we do deserve. God is a self-giving God that gives of himself of love, and this loving God calls us to walk the path of righteousness to arrive at this new neighborhood. That on the journey, we serve a God that bestows traveling mercy. Let me cut across the field to the text right quick because by the time we get to this text, we're, we're, we're experiencing a few things. First of all, when you go back to chapter 1, you see that they were in the upper room. It was right after Jesus had been, uh, 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 had been killed on the cross and it was before that they had heard that he, had not, he was not in that borrowed tomb, that that tomb was empty and it was a sister, Mary Magdalene, that Jesus presented himself to and that sister went to those brothers and he said, tell your brothers to, 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 to stay where they are. I'm going to meet them where they are. And the Bible says that while they were sitting in a locked room, <laughs> while they were sitting in a room that was under lock and key, meaning the only person that had the key was on the inside of the room. But the one who is the creator, the son of God of all things, was able to withstand the locks that we sometimes put on our own lives. Sometimes it's not the world that has locked Jesus out of his own house. Sometimes it's the church that has locked Jesus out of his own house. That has locked Jesus out of our own lives. Because we put the locks on the door from the inside. And if you remember the depiction on the fan, remember the fan? Jesus standing at the door, there's no handle on that door. Which suggests that if the door is going to be open, Joe, then the person on the inside of the house has to open the door. They're in the room, and even though the room is locked, Jesus in his infinite glory and in the power of God and in the authority of heaven, he somehow ends up in the room. And says, peace be with you. 
He shows him his nail scarred hands and he says, I'm hungry. Can somebody get me something to eat? And he sits with the guys. Eventually, he tells them, I need you to stay here a little bit longer. See, I'm about to leave you. But, but when I leave you, uh, the comforter, the counselor, the Holy Spirit is coming to join you. I don't need you to leave Jerusalem too quick because if you leave Jerusalem too quick, you might miss your blessing. The Holy Spirit comes. The Bible said it felt like a, 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 a fiery crown upon their heads. They began to speak the language of people in that place, though they themselves weren't from that particular place or even knew how to speak that language. And some people got it, Manny. Some people looked and said, that's the Holy Spirit moving in at work. Some people looked at it and they couldn't think beyond their carnal selves. Oh, they just had a little, they just had a little wood bridge. They just had a little yellow tail. They just, they, they just had a little Sutter home. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. I got babies here. I'm trying to, you know. Hey, that's right. The spirit of the Lord comes and it's filled. It came like a mighty wind gushing in, and, and the people were high on the Spirit of God. And the Bible says that Peter just started preaching. After he finished preaching about the resurrection of Christ and that the one that you rejected has now become the cornerstone of all that we be, believe, all that we see and do not see. Uh, after he did that, the Bible says 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. But by the time you get to chapter 4, it, it's not just 3,000 people a part of Christ's community anymore. It's 5,000 chapters. They grow 2,000 more people or community members of this particular community. And the Bible says that they were all together. This is not the first time, Michael, that we see this. We see it first in Acts chapter 2 when it says that they had everything in common. They devoted themselves and they did everything together. But now that by the time we get here, it's talking more about the possessions that they have. The focus is more on the fact that nobody saw their possessions as their own and they gave to anybody who was in a place of need. Folk went out and sold houses. So Folk went out and sold land. I don't know if you remember, but back when we were doing the mortgage elimination campaign, there used to be a, 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 a vertical thing that stand. They used to stand outside. And one of the things it said on the flag, on the poster thing, it said, don't forget to keep your church in your will. Some of y'all probably forgot that, but that's what it said on the thing. Because I remember, because I was like, I've never heard that before. I've never heard a church ask for that. I thought it was just something that people did, but that it was okay. I discovered when I got here, it's okay to let people know that you can think about your church uh, as you, y'all getting ready to do an estate planning uh, gathering together. How can I include my church so that the church will continue to go grow even after I am gone from this place? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you that if you become a, this is a true story, if you become a Catholic in the Catholic Church, it is mandatory for you to take, for them to take out a life insurance policy on you. They will pay the monthly rate uh, that, uh, for the life, for the duration of your life, however much longer the Lord allows you to walk. They will pay the monthly payment until you die. When you die, they will take that cash value and they will give it to the family so the family has money to pay for the funeral arrangements. But you have to make the church the beneficiary. So whatever the, the policy is for $50,000, if the cash value is $20,000, the family gets to $20,000, the church gets to $50,000, and we're wondering how is it that the Catholic Church is still alive all these years. I, 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 I brought that to here. I asked someone, I asked a couple of people, but I asked someone, what do you think of this idea? And you know, we get skeptical of things that is unfamiliar to us. So the first thing it was like, well, Rev, I don't, that sound like a scam, Rev. I don't know, Rev. That sounds like somebody, you know, trying to do something under the table, Rev. And I asked the question. I said, well, if you go into an a, a, a insurance company and you ask for a life insurance policy, is that legal? They said, yeah. I said, okay. If you get the life insurance policy and you make your next of kin the beneficiary, is that legal? They said, yeah. I said, okay, so when you pass on and the policy is given to your next of kin, is that legal? They said, yeah. 
I ain't said nothing different from what I just explained. It's just that it's on a group level. That's it. These are things that I, I, that's not even on my manuscript, and I didn't even say that at 8 o'clock service, but it just came to me just now. Uh, and so we're talking about what they have, and they had uh, everything that they needed, and those who didn't have enough, they made sure that they were able to help one another have, meet all of their needs. The Bible says that no one claimed the possession as this is mine, you got to get yours. They had a sharing policy with one another, and because they were one in heart, because they were one in mind because they did not see their possessions as solely their own. Because they were able to come together and share everything, they were able to have great power. They gave God something to work with so that the people can be empowered to continue to do the work of the church of Jesus Christ. So I want to just say a couple of things to you and I'm done. Um, one of the things that this community of believers did is they would often sit in silence. We call that prayer. But prayer can be sitting in silence. It doesn't always mean speaking. There is a church called the Church of Reconciliation. It's in a place called Taizé, France. And, and this Church of Reconciliation has carved out time where you sit and you eat Someone is sitting across from you, but no one is saying a word. There's other carved out time where you just sit in a room with a group of people and no one is talking. Howard Thurman, before he rest in peace, before he passed away, would spend a lot of time with the Quakers. And when they asked him, why do you spend so much time with the Quakers? He says, because they sit in silence. That's not all he said, but that's one of the things he said. They sit in silence, and I'm able to hear greatly from God. Howard Thurman, who is known as a mystic, if you've never read his writing, you should. Very insightful. So there's power in silence. When we come together as a, as a church family, when we come together as an assembly of God, there is power in silence. It's okay to be silent sometime. I had to learn that the hard way, but it's okay to be silent sometime. In that silence, we can be one in heart and we can be one in mind and the Holy Spirit begins to spread like wildfire all the way throughout the room. The Holy Spirit's the response to the Holy Spirit is not always, you know, jumping and dancing and hollering and screaming and running. It's not always that. Sometimes it's just listening for that still, small voice. There's power in silence if we want uh, to be uh, to imitate the community of Christ that we see illustrated here today. But the other thing, and I, and I, and I, and I didn't say this at the 8 o'clock service because it didn't come to me at the time, but uh, I, I was watching a car commercial on TV yesterday. I've seen it a few times, um, and I'm not going to call the name or the brand of the car, but it was, it was a, a, a car commercial, and on the car, on the car commercial, a lady's voice comes on and, and, and says to a, a guy in the commercial, she said, you seek the key, but you must first learn the discipline. Oh, it got real quiet. Because, see, we don't like discipline. We, don't, we, don't, we, we cool with if someone else get the discipline, but nah, not me. I'm not. But, but to follow Christ is to be disciplined in doing so. Disciplined in prayer. Disciplined in joy. Disciplined in faith. Or let me put it another way. Putting the whole armor of God on. Walking in that salvation, having a heart of righteousness, walking with the belt of truth, making sure you bring peace wherever your feet take you, and making sure you take the word of God literally in your hand or in your heart wherever you go. Because wherever you go, followers of Christ, the kingdom of God goes with you. And, and so in this discipline, you seek the key. It was a car commercial. You seek the key, but you must first learn the discipline, and one of the, and she gives three things. I already gave you one, that there's power in silence, and they were talking about how you sit in the car and you can't hear nothing outside. But, she, but, but this voice also says that energy is nothing without control. Now, it's a car commercial. I get it. I'm not twisted about that. But these things spoke to me. I was like, wow. The Holy Spirit is, is energy. 
that we carry in us that, that God uses to speak to us and to speak through us. But if we ain't got no self-control, how much worth is the Holy Spirit moving in our lives? We might not even be able to see it. And self-control is one of the fruit of the Spirit. And finally, that Holy Spirit, that energy that is within us that requires some form of control, not by us in terms of how we can control the Holy Spirit, but in terms of us paying attention to the Word of God, the way to live, the blueprint of salvation, also called the Word of God, that must be kept in check for our lives or we'll get out of control and we'll be like the man on the horse. I don't know. Ask the horse. But God gives us that power. God gives us that Holy Spirit power. God gives us that energy, that holy energy that is in us that is supposed to be used only for God things, only for divine things. And God wants to, here's the third point, unlock that energy that is within us. There are some things that may lay dormant, and, and I'm done. There may be some things that lay dormant in our lives. We don't necessarily sleep. It's sleeping, but it's time to wake up. That's my favorite line in the movie School Days. All the way at the end, Lawrence Fishburne, you said it best. Spike Lee, you wrote it. Wake up. Wake up. Because if we're sleeping, they can pull the wool over our eyes, tell us it's nighttime when the sun is shining, and we will believe it. Because we, we don't know better not to. This is the way. Finally, one of my favorite shows, waiting for the new season to come on Disney Plus, is called The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, you got to be a Star Wars fan to really get the whole thing. So I'm not going to go there, but I'm a super Star Wars fan. But The Mandalorian in the first season goes to a particular planet and he meets this guy who's a different creature, uh, not a human being, uh, but I don't remember the name of their culture, their group, their tribe, but he's about two feet tall and he walks real slow and he talks real slow. But at the end of every time he make a point or share a thought, at the end of the thought, he would always say, I have spoken. You know what I'm talking about? I have spoken. And it was like, basically his point was, discussion over. There's nothing else to say, I have spoken. Didn't you just hear me say, I have spoken? That means we're done. There's no explanation after that. Fast forward to season two. The Mandalorian is on another planet. He comes across the same kind of people, but this time it's a whole bunch of them. And they're in like a lab and they're working, they're working. And the Mandalorian is with another individual, and the individual is starting to talk and trying to get their attention, but no matter how much they say, hey, hello, we're standing here, can you look this way, we have something to tell you, the, 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 young, the little guys, they just kept working. They never looked up from their work. They just kept working, and they would still try to get their attention, hello, we just want to tell you something real quick, and they would keep working. The Mandalorian starts to talk, and at the end of his statement, he says, I have spoken. Immediately they stop working and they look up and they all have, the Mandalorian has all of their attention. And then he continues to say to them what he says to them. And then they, they, they get on board, they participate. It was something that was familiar to them. Something that they had heard before that said to them, you know, some, you know my people. You know my kinfolk. You must know somebody from my family. Because if you, if, you didn't, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know to even say that. And God is saying, I have spoken. I spoke to you through the old rugged cross. I spoke to you through the nails that were driven through his hands and feet. I spoke to you. When you got him down from the cross and was preparing his body for burial, I spoke to you. When you saw that the stone was rolled away, I spoke to you. When you went and you looked in the tomb and there was no body, I spoke to you. 
when those angels, when you saw one at the head and one at the foot and they said, why are you here? Jesus is not here. I spoke to you. When you were afraid in the upper room, scared that government and other officials were going to get the best of you and take your life like they tried to do Jesus, I spoke to you. When you were in that room with locked doors and I still made my way into your heart anyway, I spoke to you. When I told you peace be with you and showed you my nail scarred hands, I spoke to you. When the Holy Spirit came, my son came back home, but I sent the comforter and the counselor to make sure that you had some help along the way I spoke to you. When Peter opened his mouth and began to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and 3,000 people gave their life to the Lord, I spoke to you. I have spoken. This is the way. That's Mandalorian too. I didn't even realize that till just now. That's what he would say all the time. This is the way. Wow, I did not make that connection until just now. That's crazy. This is the way. What is the way? The way of love. The way of hope. The way of peace. The way of understanding. The way of faith. Jesus is the reason for the season. He's the answer to all of your problems. And if you don't believe me, I dare you to trust him for yourself and then come back and see me and let me know how it went. But I bet you, you will not come back the same way that you came. We typically in church, we open the doors of the church and we say, come on down to the Lord. And you can always do that. But today, I want to simplify it. And I'm going to just ask you to repeat after me. If you are willing and able. If you confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart. That Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. You shall be saved. That's it. For God loved the whole world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so God's church, the kingdom doors never close. This building will close, the lights will go off, the lawns will be turned on, it'll be safetified. I know I just made that up. God's church never closed. His, the doors of God's church never close. And so at any time, you could say, I want, I want to get to know this Jesus that you keep talking about. I want to get to know this father that you keep talking about. Or I'm looking for a church home. I've been searching and searching and church hopping and church hopping and church hopping. St. Albans is not a perfect church, but it's a loving church. And so the, the invitation is always extended to you. You can see any of our deacons, myself, the ushers, and we'll make sure that we get next steps in order. And so... With that being said, because the time is well spent, uh, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. And very quickly, I want to just give a brief prayer. Lord God, we thank you for reminding us that love is the way. Thank you for reminding us that you have spoken to us and you keep speaking to us time and time again through people, through experiences, through circumstances, through nature. And so God, we thank you for reminding us, help us to be loving people loving others and help us to be available to be loved by others help us most of all oh god to be in a place where we can allow you to find us and allow you to love on us that we may with great confidence and conviction share this good news that you have brought to your people that we will continue to bring to the rest of the world and so we bless you and we thank you if this word we pray that this word falls on good ground that it will blossom in our heart and take root, that it, may, that it may grow into a beautiful blessing that you can smile upon, shower your favor, your anointed blessings upon. Help us to be that person. Help us to be that group, that community, that we may represent you in the way that you've called us to do so. 
we pray and we ask all of this in the precious name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare for the institution of communion. Amen. In your program, you should have received um, a an insert that says at the top of it, Order of Holy Communion. Ask that you take that out now. If there is, if there is anyone who did not, I didn't receive one. Anyone that did not receive a celebration cup when you came in, uh, please raise your hand. And one of our deacons, we have some on this side of the room. We have a couple here. We have some here. So we can get about four, four people. That'll be great. Um, can we do the blood? The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way down, way back, rather. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength. From, From day, day to day, it will never is mine. The blood, let's do that again. The blood, the blood that. to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. Together, in the company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving bread. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with humble hearts, filled with thankfulness for your infinite love. We praise you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his body and blood for our redemption. We are grateful for the sacrifice made for us on the cross and for the grace of your forgiveness. Help us to never take for granted the precious gift of salvation. We humbly ask that you continue to work in us and through us relying on your strength and grace to overcome temptation and to avoid all that is evil and to strive for holiness. May we always remember the price paid for our freedom and may the memory of your love inspire us to show mercy and kindness to all we meet. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Let us take and eat all of it together. Amen. Likewise, through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Let us drink all of it together. Now 
we come together for the, uni the unison prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. May your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and give glory to God who is in heaven. Go forth and serve God with gladness. God has spoken. This is the way. Amen. I'd like to ask Rosalind Hairston to come forward, please. Also, Claude Johnson, and also Valerie Johnson. Please come forward. I'm gonna ask all of the deacons if you will line up on that side. And if you're a trustee, I'm gonna ask you as well to come and line up on this side over here. I'm gonna ask all the ushers that are available. I need, we need one at the door. But if you will line up behind the trustees, so deacons, trustees, ushers, please. And then we're out of here, everybody. Amen, everybody. I'd like for you to meet Valerie, Rosalind, and Claude. They have joined our church. Well, we've known each other for a long time. And we just met each other not too long ago. But amen, they have given, they have joined our church, become official members of our church. They have gone through with the requirement of taking our new members orientation class. And so we wanted to present them to you today just before we give the benediction. And we want to offer you all the right hand of fellowship. So we're going to, we'll start from this side. First, we want to give you your certificate. We offer you certificates to show. And Brother Claude, this is from the Nehemiah Men's Ministry has given you a Bible on this day. Make sure you use it, though. I know I am. I know you're going to use it, Doc. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding on you. All right. And that's from the women's ministry as well. Thank you. The Na Ruth and Naomi women's ministry. Thank you so much, Sister Brady. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise, and let's provide them with the right hand of fellowship. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Come on. Keep following the line. Let's stand up all over the house as we prepare for the benediction. you. We look forward to seeing you during the week. 
in one of the ministries, WOW Ministry, Women's Ministry, Men's Ministry, uh, that we can get to work on our church. Amen, everybody. I pray that this, this worship experience has been a one that has touched your heart. I hope that we leave here differently the way in which we came. You can come, deacons. I, I pray that you leave differently than the way in which you came. And even if it's just one word, but if you don't remember anything else, remember, love is the way. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And so... Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds. It is now unto you, Father, who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your throne. May your love, may your grace, may your peace go with us all, both now and forevermore. And all of God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. And remember, don't let anybody steal your joy. God bless you, everyone. <laughs>